Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we are finally going to do it. We're going to head out to the Stronghold where we can find the portal to the end dimension. And in the next episode, we'll be going to the end for the first time to face down the Ender Dragon. To begin our search for the Stronghold, I need to grab some of the Ender Pearls that we've collected so far, and there aren't a great deal of them in the chest right here, so I'm grabbing them directly out of the item filter, but we'll have plenty more of these to add to the filters before long. I also have a bunch in the house over here. They should still be in my storage system since I've gathered a few Ender Pearls over the course of the series so far. Right here, we've got 12 of them. Okay, that leaves us with 22. Not too bad, and up here, here, we should still have some blaze rods. If I break those down into blaze powder, we get two per rod, so we should have plenty to craft some eyes of ender. While we're familiar with these already as the crafting ingredient for an ender chest, they also have a separate functionality and one which would arguably be more important. If we step outside and throw one of these eyes of ender into the air, it will point the direction of the stronghold and looks like that one right there is going to be pointing us in this direction that is southwest so i'm going to take a note of that and make a couple of other preparations first of all i need a decent source of food and for that i'm going to buy some golden carrots from the farmer that i've been trading with after we got hold of the hero of the village effect regis is going to sell me some golden carrots and golden carrots are one of the best foods in the game when it comes to saturation the behind the scenes value that prevents you from getting hungry for longer so we're going to be eating golden carrots as our primary food for a little while now, especially since we have a decent amount of emeralds. I'm going to craft these last two ender pearls into eyes of ender anyway. I figured I would do that just in case we need them, since it is possible for an ender pearl when thrown into the air to break and to not be able to retrieve it. And ideally, in our search for the stronghold, we want to end up with 12 eyes of ender left once we reach the stronghold itself. In theory, we should not need that many, but that's the worst case scenario, so it's always a good idea to plan ahead. And now that daytime has arrived, we're going to set off in search of the stronghold. We're going to head off southwest, I'm going to bring a boat and a bed with me, because this is potentially going to be a longer trip. And every so often, we're going to tune in to our coordinates and pay attention to how those numbers are behaving. Because there are multiple strongholds out in the world, there are actually multiple ways of accessing the end portal and getting to the end dimension. And on Minecraft Java Edition, those are arranged in rings centered on the 0, zero coordinate, with the first set of strongholds really arriving once you are 1300 blocks away from the 0, zero point of your world. But those can be anywhere between 1300 blocks and about 2800 blocks, so it's possible that the stronghold is actually quite far away from our base. It can also be quite difficult to keep track of your eyes of ender if you're throwing them in a densely forested area like a jungle or a regular forest. If you're throwing them on the floor, then you might not be able to see which way they go. So while we're out here in the open ocean, I'm going to throw an eye of ender and check that it's heading in the right direction. Good, looks like this one's going in the right direction, and it also dropped for us, so I can dive down to the ocean floor and retrieve that. In terms of coordinates, we are now about 1500 blocks out, coming up to 1600 blocks out from the 0, zero coordinates, so we might expect strongholds to start generating around this point. And there is a little ocean island dead ahead of us, so I think I'll step out of the boat on this island, throw my next Eye of Ender from there, and see if it's traveling in the same direction. So this time we are about 1800 blocks out on the x-axis, and oh no, it looks like the Eye of Ender is now traveling back, and there you go, that's an example of what happens when one of them breaks. Still, we have 21 left, we only need to keep 12, and it seems like we have already gone over the direction of the stronghold. In fact, the stronghold seems to be probably somewhere in this ocean biome, somewhere below the surface. So now it becomes our job to sort of zero in on the location of the stronghold. And to do that, we can go to an adjacent piece of terrain. We're kind of traveling laterally here. We'll throw the Eye of Ender from here and we'll see which direction it travels. It's actually traveling back that way. So it seems like the stronghold might actually be closer to that island, perhaps even somewhere near the shipwreck. Now here's the tricky part, there is no surface structure that marks the entrance to the stronghold. The strongholds are going to be completely underground, and in some cases they can be really far down in the world. If you want to be more precise about things, you can actually locate the staircase that begins the stronghold structure in the same way that you can at buried treasure. If you look for the chunk in which the enderpearl descends into the ground instead of 
floating up and pointing in a direction from the sky. You can enable chunk borders using that F3 and G shortcut, and you look for the 4-4 relative coordinate, in the same way that you look for the 9-9 coordinate. In this case, it looks like that is this chunk here, and if we throw the Eye of Ender here, it's going to go straight downwards. But I think, in this case, we're going to use the shipwreck as kind of a staging area to dig a tunnel down to the stronghold. First of all, I'm going to dive in here and see what this treasure is. We've got a couple of extra armor trims from that, of course, that's very nice. Then I'm going to grab a bunch of dirt from this nearby island, and we're going to use that to fill in all the water in the cabin, so we don't drown while we're in there. Obviously, if I'd known about this, I might have brought some sponges with me, and the process of doing this would be a lot faster. And there are so many waterlogged blocks down here, waterlogged stairs and fences and that kind of thing, but it seems like we've eliminated most of those now. And from here, we can start a staircase down into the neighboring chunk, where we should hopefully find the structure of the stronghold. Once our staircase reaches a certain length, I might actually turn right and start digging down in a kind of spiral staircase formation. And there we are, we found it. Incredible. Okay, these are the blocks of the stronghold, and you can tell because there are mossy stone bricks here, along with some stone brick and cracked stone brick in certain situations. Looks like we're also digging down into a lush cave since there is clay down here, but this is really where we want to be. So if I open this up a little bit, we're going to silk touch some of these blocks. There we go. We have found the entrance to the stronghold. This initial staircase begins the structure and we get the eye spy advancement for taking our first steps into the stronghold. At this point, my first instinct is to make sure that we have a safe way back up since we might need to return from this structure but then after that, we can make our way down the spiral staircase. And honestly, I might put some of these blocks and stuff in a chest up here, since we shouldn't be needing any of the blocks of the shipwreck from upstairs. And maybe I'll stash the treasure and whatnot in here as well, so we have a slightly clearer inventory. Now, stepping down here, we'll encounter an iron door, which we can open up with the buttons on the side here, or you can simply just break it. And I honestly recommend breaking those doors just so that they can effectively act as markers for where you have already been. You can also navigate in here using torches because the structure of the stronghold is a winding system of corridors. It's kind of a labyrinth that leads you to the end portal or may occasionally lead you away from it. This is where placing the torches on one of the two walls is going to come in really handy. I'm going to put them on the left so I can find the right way back following the old Paul Saws Jr. mnemonic, but it looks like this room has ended in a dead end. And we can always break down a couple of the walls here just in case there is another adjacent room that has overlapped with some of the stronghold generation here. But no, it looks like we just break back out into the corridor we've already explored. So it looks like we're going up and over the top. These cells to either side here don't really serve any kind of purpose. Occasionally mobs will spawn in them and it looks like they're in jail, but <laughs> at the moment we don't need to do anything inside of there. We do need to keep our wits about us since there are going to be mobs in here thanks to the amount of dark area. But you'll find the stronghold has generated some torches in some of these rooms. So it's worth bearing that in mind. And in this case, we've got a torch placed on the right hand wall by the game here we're going to switch that to the left hand wall so it doesn't disorient us whilst we're exploring and it looks like we might have come around to an area that comes straight through from this intersection so i'm going to be breaking down the doors and making sure i know which directions i've traveled these rooms often interconnect to a series of different tunnels but it looks like in this case we don't have anything to either side it's simply generated into the terrain around the outside, so I don't need to worry too much about what's going on in here. I can also hear some lava noises if I stand in this corner, so behind the wall or possibly underneath the floor is potentially the location of the stronghold portal room. It could be a lava lake that generated naturally as part of the terrain here, but the portal room also contains a little bit of lava, so it might be worth exploring in this direction from this doorway here, and it looks like a spiral staircase leads down into more of the stronghold structure. Keeping our torches on the left here, it looks like we just have a couple of those jail cells, so we're going to double back around, and if we want to, we can mark off the doors that we've already traveled through with some sort of building block. Bring some logs with you or you know use some natural stone here that doesn't form part of the stronghold corridors and it will be obvious that those are doors that you've explored already looks like we don't get anything going through that way so we're going to have to go around that's another dead end on this side looks like the stronghold does break out into cave systems here and there but this one is also a dead end, huh? Interesting. At that point, we have explored basically every direction we can do, given the natural winding paths of the stronghold structure. So it seems like this stronghold may actually have wrapped back around on itself and overlapped 
putting a wall up in an area where there's not supposed to be one. So I'm going to return to the corner of this room where I heard the lava noises, and we're going to be digging out the walls of this to see if we can get a little closer to where I'm hearing those lava sounds, because it may be that we dig into a different part of the stronghold. Oh yeah, okay, I've dug up directly underneath the lava. Now the question is, is this entire floor area here going to drip with lava? Because if it is, yeah, it looks like we're not digging up under the stronghold portal room after all. I think the uh, ceiling above us would be made out of stone bricks if that was the case. So unfortunately, it looks like the game is leaving us to do a little bit of guesswork here. Which direction is the stronghold going to extend? Or is this really it? Is this all of the stronghold structure that's generated in this region? If this happens to you, the first thing I recommend doing is going back to the entrance to your stronghold and digging through any walls that appear to be stronghold corridors that have dead ended. I'm also hearing a lot of zombie noises around me in this area, so I'm wondering, yes, if I dig through this wall, it looks like the stronghold itself has generated weirdly and concealed the neighboring corridor. So this looks like a much better direction for us to go and we even have a stronghold chest here. If I open this up, it's going to contain a couple of basic supplies. It will have a bit of food, some armor, sometimes additional ender pearls, and even things like music discs. But from here, the stronghold splits out into other corridors which are potentially going to lead us down towards what we want. And if we go down this set of stairs here, yeah, it looks like it has overlapped weirdly because that staircase generated with a ceiling that's a little bit low. If we head down through this iron door in front of us, we're heading towards some corridors with a little bit of light. And oh, there is a cobblestone room here that looks like the game has tried to generate a spawner dungeon but it seems like the spawner didn't generate, it was taken over by stronghold generation. We still have the chests of a spawner dungeon though, which is kind of interesting. We can block off this section temporarily since that isn't going to lead us down towards the portal room, and I still haven't found any of the zombies I was hearing through the floor, so I'm wondering if those were in the vicinity of the portal room or if another spawner has generated down here somewhere. Oh, here is our zombie room. It looks like there's a couple of them in here along with some skeletons, and now the skeleton is in trouble because he's shot at a couple of the zombies trying to hit me. Looks like that leads to a dead end as well. And one thing I should note whilst we're down here exploring is be a little careful if you're breaking the walls with a standard pick that doesn't have silk touch because every so often one of these stone bricks, cracked stone bricks, or even mossy stone bricks can be a silverfish egg. We might have encountered silverfish earlier in the series, especially if you've been doing any mining in mountain biomes. And obviously on Java Edition, if we look at blocks using the F3 screen, you'll be able to see whether the block you are targeting is a regular stone brick, or in this case, infested stone bricks. I'm gonna break that with a pickaxe to show you what happens because instead of the block dropping, you will get this puff of smoke there and occasionally a silverfish will pop out and start to attack you. There you go, we got one of these. They look like little bugs or mice or something and they can be pretty easily dispatched. They don't have a lot of health, but if you end up hitting them and not instantly killing them, they can summon other silverfish out of similarly infested blocks in the surrounding area. If you're using a silk touch pickaxe, however, the infested property of that block does not apply and you just pick up a standard version of the block without awakening any silverfish. You can never obtain those infested stone bricks, so you can't go and make a house out of them that would explode if you mined it improperly. But let's head down the staircase towards the light at the end of here and we found ourselves in another landmark structure of the stronghold. This is the library. Now, of course, this is a really great source of books and bookshelves. If you wanted them for decorative purposes, if you feel like you want to make another enchanting setup somewhere, if you just want more enchanted book fodder, they will also contain these loot chests, which occasionally have bits and pieces in that are worth grabbing, a couple of loose books, some paper, and in this case, the eye armor trim, which is a very nice find. So I'm going to pop that in my ender chest right away. I really don't want to end up losing that. The eye armor trim can exclusively be found as part of stronghold loot, so it's very nice to have one of those. You'll find another chest up here in the corner on the balcony section of the library, and that has another eye armor trim in it, so that's really nice to have a duplicate already. In addition to those, you might occasionally find enchanted books here in the Stronghold Library, so it's always worth looking for, and of course, you can break your way through the bookshelves if you want to avoid the cobwebs, or if you just want a nice easy way out collecting books as you go. But typically, these library rooms are the terminus of a series of tunnels. They're not going to lead through to anywhere else, so we can safely turn around and explore a different avenue. Looks like our next direction has a spiral staircase that leads down, so let's explore these corridors, and it looks like there are a couple of doors that once again 
lead through to a dead end. And this one leads out into a flooded section of corridor. There's some glow squid that have suffocated while here. And once again, there we go. This chest contains a couple more ender pearls, which if we are short on ender pearls by the time you reach the stronghold, we could always resupply from one of these chests if we get lucky. Now, in this case, it seems like the stronghold structure does lead out into this cave where there don't seem to be any more stone brick structures around. The axolotls are having a lovely time in here, but in this case, I'm not concerned about exploring too much further in that direction. You may occasionally, however, find that your stronghold has been bisected by a ravine or by cave generation, and in those cases, it's usually a good idea to explore the area just in case one of the rooms has ended up getting fragmented, and that leads further down towards the portal room. Another spiral staircase that leads us even further down, but that also seems to lead to a dead end. Once again, I heard a couple of zombie noises, so it may be that the world has overlapped the stronghold in a couple of weird ways, but we still do have a couple of directions here that we might be able to travel and once again this room here which handily generated with a button in this block so I knew which way to go that's leading through to the next area we have a fountain room right here that's usually a good sign the fountain rooms seem to occur very close to this room this is the end portal and you'll notice there is a silverfish spawner up here on the staircase near the portal frame here is the main thing we came here for and it's important not to rush over here because as you can see we end up with a bunch of lava underneath this ring of blocks now this ring of blocks is the end portal and this is why we have brought so many eyes of ender with us you'll notice that one of the portal frame blocks is already occupied by an eye of ender while there are 11 that are currently vacant and there is a small chance of more of these being filled up already up to the point where you can stumble into a stronghold even though this is very unlikely, and find all 12 portal frames already filled in with Eyes of Ender. In this case though, we can simply right click on these portal frames with an Eye of Ender to place the eyes in there, and eventually once all 12 are filled up, it will activate the portal. We're only gonna place 11 of those, or well, 10 of those, with one already in there. Oh, and there we go. I've ended up dealing non-lethal damage to a silverfish, and already the blocks of the room are rebelling. Well, there we go. We took out a couple of them. And this is the reason that a lot of people will break the silverfish spawner once they first arrive in the dungeon, because silverfish don't drop anything useful aside from experience, and it's kind of unnecessary creating a farm for these. It's not really going to work out very well for you. Not to mention that they can break out some of the blocks around this little pool of lava here, and the lava will leak into the surrounding room. We're actually going to pour water over the top of that lava to convert it into obsidian, and naturally I'll need to light up the area a little better after removing that major light source. But breaking out these blocks of obsidian, we're going to use these to create a nether portal relatively close to this portal frame because the end portal is one we will need to return to very often. And unlike nether portals, they only occur at fixed points throughout the world, and they cannot be moved. You cannot obtain these blocks and move your end portal somewhere else. If I try and mine these, nothing happens. It's kind of like mining bedrock. Likewise, they can't be pushed by pistons or obtained using any other survival means, so this is the place we will have to return to if we want to travel to the end dimension in future. We got nine obsidian from that. I'm going to pour a little bit of water over the sides here, so we end up with a bit more obsidian for our nether portal. And then I'm going to back away because I really don't feel like dealing with these silverfish any more than I have to. There is still a bit of unexplored stronghold out here as well, but I think I'm going to put my nether portal in the center of this room, probably facing towards that entrance. That way I know when I come through this portal, I'm going to end up facing the stronghold. With 12 obsidian, we'll make a 3x3 portal like this, and I should have a flint and steel here in my ender chest. Perfect. And now, of course, I can head on through to the nether to create a portal on the opposite side, or I can take these coordinates and use them to create a matched portal somewhere in the nether that I have more control over. Just out of curiosity, I think I will step through to the nether just to get my bearings. I don't think this should match to any of the portals I have already created. Nope, it looks like we are relatively low down, although that's quite close to a tunnel I've already made, judging by what I can see above me. Yeah, this must be the walkway that leads me out towards that desert portal. So that's actually really convenient, because all I need to do is relocate this portal vertically, and I should be able to step off that walkway towards the desert biome directly into the stronghold. We're going to do that right now. We're going to take down the obsidian of this portal and use it to relocate the portal adjacent to that walkway. And I guess the portal was about here. Yeah, that's where the magma blocks are. But wow, that was tremendous 
tremendously convenient. <laughs> Certainly saves me a little bit of hassle for when I create my nether hub later. So there we go. We should be able to light this portal up and fingers crossed, we return to that portal in the stronghold. Nailed it! Excellent! Very, very good. So, now we should be able to have a two-way connection to the stronghold anytime we want to, and I think I'll put some of the mossy stone bricks that I've been gathering from the stronghold up around here, so it's obvious which portal this is, and then probably fill in the back behind the portal as well, because otherwise I could be stepping off into a lava lake. <laughs> Back inside the stronghold, we have a couple of other things we can investigate. We've already looked in these chests right here, but there are a few other side rooms that I am interested in exploring. There are typically two of those library rooms per stronghold, and you'll also sometimes find a room like this, where a ladder leads up to this suspended platform, where you'll sometimes find a little bit of loot in a chest. Often just supplies like bread and apples, nothing too serious in there. Another corridor chest is gonna give us another couple of pieces of bread and another free ender pearl, so that's quite nice to have, and <laughs> I wonder who's behind this door. Once again, it looks like some of the stronghold has been broken apart by aquifers, down here. Well, that's not a problem. Our portal room was intact, and that's the important thing. But here we go. Here is our second library. So I'm going to step into here. We're going to close the door behind us for a little privacy. And once again, we find ourselves with enchanted books and another armor trim, the eye armor trim. Up on the next layer, we're going to find most likely the same thing. Yep, there we go. Oh, and a book with three enchantments on it. That's a rare find. It looks like the rest of these corridors are going to be dead ends, and having found that second library, there's really not a whole lot else that we're going to find down here. I don't believe there is an opportunity for a third library or a second portal room or anything, unless some kind of cosmic fluke has happened and your seed has glitched out and there are multiple strongholds adjacent to each other. In this case, it looks like we are all done here. So I'm going to throw the other armor trims into the ender chest. We're going to leave the enchanted book and probably the golden apple in there as well. And now we're going to return home so that we can talk about how to prepare for our visit to the end and the fight with the Ender Dragon. Okay, back at the storage room, we're gonna throw everything up here into storage. Naturally, we'll have to keep one Eye of Ender for opening the portal, but the remaining 10 we could make into additional Ender chests if we want to, or they could be used to locate another stronghold elsewhere in the world, because if for whatever reason you can't find the portal room in the stronghold that you visited, it's entirely possible to go in a different direction to find a different stronghold. As I mentioned on Java Edition, the strongholds generate in a series of rings centering on the 0, zero coordinates. So if that stronghold was a bust, all we would need to do would be to travel basically directly across 0, zero in the opposite direction and then throw an Eye of Ender while we are over there. And at the time of this recording, at least, they are evenly spaced out along that ring in a sort of triangle. So if we have a one to the southwest, if we rotate our field of view by a third, chances are we would probably have one to the kind of north-northwest and probably one somewhere to the east as well. Now, in terms of our preparations for the dragon fight, we could just go in with the gear that we already have, but there are a couple of things that I will advise as precautionary measures that you bring with you. The fight with the Ender Dragon happens in a completely different dimension, which is an island floating in the void. If you fall off the island at any point, you're probably going to die. There really isn't a great deal of ways to recover from falling into the void. And when you first load in to the end dimension, you'll arrive on this 5x5 platform of obsidian, which can be disconnected from the central island where the dragon fight begins. So for that purpose, I recommend bringing a bunch of logs with you. The main reason I recommend logs over any other kind of material is that they can be broken down into planks, which means you're effectively carrying four times the amount of material that is stored in a single stack of space. Not only that, but the planks can be further broken down into slabs, which doubles the amount of material you have there for bridging over to the main island. Also, later in our exploration of the end dimension, we're going to be doing a lot of bridging between floating islands like this, since the whole dimension is made up of these different islands suspended in the void. So it's going to be vital to have an adequate supply of bridging material that we can use to bridge out to other islands. Once we've reached the central island where the dragon fight takes place, a decent ranged weapon and a decent melee weapon are going to be vital. I recommend that you bring a bow with infinity so you are unlikely to run out of arrows, but if you prefer to put mending on your bow, then make sure you've brought at least a stack of arrows, if not more. I'd say a stack if you're confident with your aim, and slightly more if you are underconfident. You can always bring a couple of stacks of arrows in your ender chest if 
you want to, but I recommend having a decent supply of projectiles because one of the conditions of the Ender Dragon fight is that you destroy a bunch of end crystals that are perched on top of obsidian pillars. When those take any sort of damage, they explode, so destroying them at close range is going to be potentially deadly. It's much better to destroy them with a projectile from a distance. Projectile doesn't even have to be an arrow though. You can use snowballs if we want to break down some of the snow blocks around here. You can always throw a couple of these at the end crystal and if they make contact they will destroy it instantly. You can even use chicken eggs and they will have the same effect. But a bow or crossbow if you prefer those is going to still be a really good idea for fighting the dragon itself since it will spend a lot of the time in the air. It will only come down to perch in a central location every so often and that's when you can get your melee hits in but the majority of the time if you're fighting the dragon actively you're going to be hitting it from the ground with a projectile weapon while it's in the air and unfortunately snowballs and eggs don't do any damage to the ender dragon so you're going to have to use a bow or a crossbow for that i also don't recommend using a trident since throwing one of those and missing can result in the trident flying into the void and at some point i think they planned on making the loyalty enchantment return a trident from the void but i don't know for certain if that's been implemented yet, so you do risk losing a pretty valuable weapon if you go down that route. Now, much like in the Nether, beds explode when placed and right-clicked in the end dimension, and so you might have seen some Minecraft speedrunners attempting to kill the dragon using the explosions from a bed when the dragon comes down to perch on the central portal. That's a kind of advanced way of doing things. If it's your first time fighting the Ender Dragon, I don't recommend attempting it because there are many ways in which that can result in the player getting blown up instead of the dragon. Instead, I recommend using melee and projectile weapons to take down the dragon and spend the rest of your time focused on evasion. If the player makes contact with the dragon, or I suppose more accurately, if the dragon flies at the player, it can knock you into the air, causing you to fly up, and that can typically result in near fatal fall damage or even the dragon knocking you into the void. And to avoid that outcome, we return to the phantom membrane that we gathered in the previous episode, because that will allow us to brew a potion of slow falling. After you put your nether wart in, just add the phantom membrane in there, and we might want to consider adding some redstone dust to this to increase the duration of our slow falling potion. The default duration is 1 minute 30, adding in some redstone will increase that to four minutes and four minutes of slow falling is pretty decent for the ender dragon fight even if it's your first time fighting the dragon i don't expect the fight would last much longer than 12 minutes so 12 minutes of slow falling is going to have you pretty well covered alternatively if you're a maverick and you have quick reflexes you can bring a water bucket with you which can save you from a difficult fall by simply placing it before you land the water bucket clutch like that can save you in a variety of situations although it takes a little bit of practice don't expect to execute it first time but a water bucket will also be incredibly useful useful because the rest of the island is populated by endermen and the ender dragon is going to be flying around in the sky while the endermen are walking around on the ground and naturally if you look at any enderman you're going to end up having to fight them which can get a little bit disorienting and also kind of dangerous for that i also recommend considering carving a pumpkin and wearing it on your head instead of a helmet naturally this is going to reduce any protection that you're getting from the armor and the armor enchantments but wearing a pumpkin on your head while it also decreases your vision like this prevents any enderman you look at from getting angry at you they simply won't recognize a player with a pumpkin on their head looking at them as any kind of hostile force, so you won't end up getting attacked by Endermen if you're wearing a pumpkin in the end. Unfortunately, the reduced visibility does make it a little bit difficult to fight the dragon. You can press F1 to remove the HUD, although unfortunately that removes all of the other HUD elements like seeing what you've got in your hands at the time. Personally, I'm not going with the carved pumpkin approach simply because I want you folks to be able to enjoy the video, and also I've gotten pretty good at not looking directly at the Enderman. But once again, the bucket of water is going to save you from from Endermen if they end up targeting you, because if you simply place the bucket of water and stand in the center of it, Endermen do not like making contact with water, and the water will spread out at a large enough radius that you'll be able to safely attack and deal with the Endermen whilst not having them come near to you to deal melee damage. Aside from that, bring a healthy supply of food with you. We're going to be using golden carrots for this fight, but if you've got any golden apples, a boss fight is a pretty good opportunity to use those. And if you want the fight to go even quicker, considering bringing a couple of buff potions with you 
We can bring some health potions if we need to heal up nice and quickly. We could bring some regen potions if we need a longer lasting regen effect. And we've got some strength 2 potions which will help us deal a lot more melee damage where it counts. Swiftness might also be useful but you won't need things like fire resistance or water breathing. Night vision is going to be virtually useless as well. The dragon does not breathe fire so fire resistance will not help you. But honestly that is more or less it. Unless you folks can think of anything else that you do to gear up when you're ready to fight the dragon. So let me know that stuff in the comments. It would be really interesting to hear how other people prepare for the dragon fight, but that's going to be it. In Monday's episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide, we're going to be going to the end, fighting the dragon, and seeing what comes next. But that's going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Folks, I do hope you've enjoyed this look at how to find the stronghold. Best of luck traveling to the stronghold in your own world. So let me know how it goes. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. My name has been Pixelriffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.